Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a legend made from 1986 to 2004. This is the Patek Philippe 3970G Perpetual Calendar Chronograph. The model seen here is often described as a fourth series watch and it's a timepiece that was part of the last run of these, built from the late 1990s through 2004. 36.3 millimeters in diameter on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it wears easily. It's just over 43 millimeters, 43.5 from lug to lug with a 13 millimeter thickness on the wrist so it'll duck under any formal sleeve or dress cuff with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now the timepiece is equipped with a sort of rust red or red brown, large rectangular scale matte finish alligator leather strap with a monotone stitch, sheer sided construction showing the layers of leather. You can see this is a brand new Patek Philippe factory strap. It features the later pull tab spring bars that allow you to use your fingernail to remove the strap for cleaning between the lugs or strap swapping. And this is another feature often considered to be one of the informal signatures of the fourth series, the use of a full deployment clasp rather than a pin buckle as seen on the earlier models. Now another feature you'll note that distinguishes most of the third series and all of the fourth series is the absence of hallmarks on the flanks of the lugs. On this series you can see they are distinct and deep on the undersides of the lugs rather than in the profile. What you look for on these watches is the depth and the definition of the fluting of the lugs. This is usually the first place where you'll see evidence of excessive or incompetent refinishing. And this watch is exactly as we received it. We've done no additional work on the metal, so it features the original volume, the original metal, the original definition, and all the original scratches and scuffs with which the watch came to us. You can also see that there is a sharp break between the case band and the lugs. This is something that signifies advanced handmade case construction. So the lug is welded on and then the evidence of the physical welded joint is removed to create that sharp break so that the lugs stand out distinct from the case. The case itself has a lovely and somewhat anachronistic compound curvature to it with a sharp longitudinal character line created by the junction between the bezel and the case. All of high polish, you can see the bezel is concave in profile to give the watch a slimmer less massive visual profile. It is a German calendar, so this watch was built for German language customers within or without Switzerland, making it just a little bit different. It's intuitive to learn and you'll catch on soon enough, but it gives the watch a wonderful old world flavor. The dial is what Patek would describe as opaline silver or matte silver, and you can see the dial is also emblematic of the third and fourth series watches as the leaf hands are long gone and in their place faceted and pointed baton style hands with applied faceted white gold dart style indices. You have mono counters with the constant seconds and chronograph hours at nine. You have the leap year phase with chronograph minutes at three. You have a radial or pointer style date with a moon phase and the moon phase featuring an adjustment interval of 122 years. Of course, Let's get this running. A sharp column wheel action thanks to the Lamagna based, that is Lamagna 2310 based, Patek Philippe CH 2770. Now the 3970 was the first of the Patek Philippe perpetual calendar chronographs to use the Lamagna caliber, a change from the previous Valju calibers or Valju Bausch used. I should mention that Patek modifies this movement immensely. It's nothing like the basic Lamagna, nor is it anything like the Omega 321 that went to the moon, which is based on the same Bausch. Here we have a full Gyromax style Patek Philippe signature, free sprung balance. It has an overcoil hairspring rather than a flat hairspring, so you've got free sprung rather than mobile stud index. You've got overcoil versus standard flat. You have Geneva hallmark finish on every surface versus, well, quite rough finish in the case of the basic Lamagna. You also have, rather than the 45 to 48 hour power reserve of the Lamagna, 60 to 65 hour power reserve in the Patek CH2770. The finishing deserves a little bit of discussion in its own right. Now you can see this is a lateral clutch column wheel chronograph and in Geneva fashion there is a cap on the column wheel, which is not just attractive but it has a functional purpose. Most finishing has functional origins, and in the case of the capped column wheel, it's designed to help resist shock so that the horns of the levers and the yoke don't jump out from between the crenellated towers. You can also see that the finishing is exquisite. Cote de Genève across the bridges. The bridges have been reprofiled and entirely replaced by Patek Philippe in-house units, and you can see along the edge of the bridges as well as the steel chronograph levers and the yoke, there is a mirrored on You can see it optically smooth 
and shimmering on the edge of every bridge and moving surface. You'll note the same degree of polishing within every jewel and screw sink. Every screw head is black polished with its slot and its circumference chamfered. In addition to the anglage Cote de Genève and satin finish across the top of the levers and the yoke, you have an engine turned prolage on the base plate and all of this executed to the highest standards. Patek Philippe says it has only one standard of finish, but when you look at something like a 324 and then you look at this under a macro type lens or with a high powered loop, you realize that there is a difference in favor of this style of Patek Philippe finish. The Haute de Gamme, the top of the line. 30 meters water resistant, so it's not a water resistant watch, but then again, you have a Nautilus for that, right? Of course. See this fourth series, Protect Fleet Perpetual Calendar Chronograph, and make it yours on the watch box.